Hello and how are you? Welcome to my session on Introduction to Occupational Health and Safety. My name is Winnie Barawa. If you're new here, this is a channel that caters for lessons, lectures and interviews concerning healthcare and any related topics. Keep up with me as we discover more about occupational health and its various concepts. So first and foremost, occupational health and safety is an area that is concerned with the safety, health and welfare of people who are engaged in their work and different employment. And in this topic, we most of the time we identify more so related to concerns that cater for physical, mental and social well-being of the workers in relation to their work and their working environment and how the worker or the employee can adjust to their work uh, in relation to the work also through themselves. So there's an interesting bit here that I want to touch on, that it is also defined as being concerned with physical, mental and social well-being of workers in relation to their work and the working environment and his or her adjustment to work and the adjustment of work to him or her. In short, we are relating the employee to their work and the work in relation to the employee. So it's a two-way cut-across kind of approach. So occupational health and safety looks into the concerns of the employee and it also looks at the adjustment of the work to the employee. So that's how this uh, branch looks into. So generally, it says that the environment we work in as healthcare workers is very key because it promotes part of our health and safety as we go to work. And the other term or concept that we need to know is the ergonomics. Ergonomics is being defined as fitting the job to the workers, or rather we are saying, how do we create the work to be in such a way that it's appropriate, effective, and safe enough to the workers? How this can involve things like designing the tools, the machines, the layout, the methods, and the environment that is helping us achieve the efficiency of this work to both the worker or the man, in this case, the man refers to the worker or the employees, and the machines around them. So this environment where the workers are is simply being referred as the economics or the study of the working environment in relation to how efficient and effective enough is it to the employees and to the environment that they are working around. And the other bit is hazard. So hazard is defined as the potential to cause harm. And hazards can be of many types. Could be a physical hazard, an emotional hazard, could be a chemical hazard. All these are environment or states that can have a potential to cause harm. And when individuals get uh, or develop uh, complications or they develop issues based on their work or being at risk because of their work, then most of the time these illnesses, we call them the occupational diseases or occupational illnesses. E.g., you could be working in your office and it's so stressful, the work relations are not good and someone can develop high blood pressure because of the stress that the person is presented to. Now, high blood pressure is a medical illness. But now this patient has gotten diagnosis of high blood pressure because of an conducive working environment. So in this case, the high blood pressure shall become an occupational illness or occupational disease because they develop that disease because of the poor working conditions or poor working environment. And this is now what brings us to the occupational disease, a disease that is caused directly by a person's work or occupation. And a good example is the state that we've given about the high blood pressure or hypertension. Someone develops hypertension because of poor working environment, at risk environment, stressful environment, and they end up with hypertension. So in this case, hypertension shall be called an occupational disease. And lastly, we can define the workplace. So a workplace is a setting where someone spends most of their time and has a risk of exposing them to hazards. And it is in this case that we are studying occupational health and safety to explore the different hazards that a person can be exposed in their workplaces. And then we can look at the different pre uh, preventive procedures that a person can take to keep themselves safe. So what are the aims and objectives of occupational health? The occupational health and, and safety uh, 
speciality looks into mainly promoting physical, mental, and social well-being of the workers or employees. They also work together to prevent the employees from harm, more so caused by the working conditions or the working environment. So there's a promotion aspect of physical, mental, and social well-being of the employees, but they also work together to prevent harm that can be caused by the working conditions. Occupational health also provides protection from risks that are resulting from factors that are advice to our health, e.g. those who work in industries that have fumes or chemicals as part of the waste materials, then it works to protect individuals from such risks. And then the other bit is placing workers in an environment that has adopted to physical and psychological equipments. And this looks into aspects of how can workers be adopted or adapted enough to their different equipments in this environment. And how is this done? A good example is places where there's an influx of new machine each and every moment regularly, e.g. in a car dealing company, for example. They are always manufacturing new cars and maybe they get this into suppliers or dealers who can sell directly to clients. Now, in such a case, you may find that because the machine is new, then there's need to protect the, uh, the, the workers by ensuring that maybe there's regular training on how to operate the machines or e.g. there's regular briefing before the machine are operated. And this is a way of keeping the members safe in case maybe the machine came in and it's faulty and they don't know how to operate it that can put them at risk of any breakdown if they touch on the wrong places. And the fifth bit is to assist injured and disabled for the purpose of rehabilitation. So occupational health and safety also provides for rehabilitation of employee in case they end up injured or disabled because of the exposure to these high-risk environments. Uh, next, there is um, improving human efficiency at risk by applying the, uh, the concepts of ergonomics. I remember ergonomics is looking at how do we make sure that the environment is safe enough for the employee so that they can easily adapt to it. And him or in this concept, we are looking at uh, improving the machines, improving the logistics, improving the designs of structures and so on. So with ergonomics, the advantage is that it ensures that there's human efficiency by making sure that the machines are also adaptable enough to the workers who are working in these environments. And the last bit is reducing the cost of injuries and workers' compensation. Remember, by, by law and insurance, you're required to compensate the workers for any injuries that they go through while they're at work, what you call the, uh, the workman's compensation. This is a type of insurance that you give to workers when they get injured or they get uh, some damages because of the work environment. And for this, we are able to reduce this cost if you carefully take care of our workers provide an effective environment, safe environment, good conditions that don't put them at risk to such environment. So to reduce the compensation cost, it's good to provide a good working environment that is effective, enabling enough and friendly for the workers to be more productive and efficient. And the other bit is on principles of occupational health. So with principles, we are looking at what guides occupational health and safety as an industry. And one of them is says that um, the first principle is fostering safety and healthy working environment, which is like the main principle why we have occupational health and safety. That the environment has to be safe, the environment has to be healthy, and caters not only for the needs of the employer, but also for the needs of the workers. It also works to protect employers, families, and the co-workers. So it's not just a one-way uh, principle, it's that as much as we are focusing on protecting the workers, we also need to ensure that the employer is also protected and the families of all of these members in the company or in the working environment. It's providing inf information, so it's part of it's a role of the occupational health also to provide information to workers about health and safety hazards. So it's key that uh, regularly or once in a while, there is conducting of CMEs or health, ed or health education sessions pertaining to safety or health hazards that are prone to the different environments that people are placed. Number four, there's providing of information and safe guiding to the surrounding community. Now, mostly where we work, we have the surrounding communities and this could be members of the public. It could be uh, any other workers or uh, companies or industries that are surrounding us in our neighborhood. These are part of our community. And for that, we need to provide, let's say, warning information or guiding information in case other people are part of this uh, space or they're part of the working space. 
For instance, if you work in hospitals, we generate a lot of uh, human waste or we generate a lot of hazardous waste, which sometimes could end up exposing it to the environment. And for this, it's good to demarcate indicators or markings that can show to the public that this is a high risk zone and people should keep careful or they should observe certain hygiene practices as they move around such an environment. So it's very key that such information are provided, not only for the protection, but also for safeguarding of the surrounding community members. And the last bit here is identification and correction of the health and safety hazards. If we detect that a certain industry is producing leaking chemicals, for example, it's appropriate enough that the industry or the company takes action and, and, uh, and, um, and covers the leakages or, or, uh, or eliminate these hazardous chemicals and avoid exposure to the community or to the surrounding. Because it's unfortunate that for hazardous chemicals that have potential to be flammable, they can cause huge fires that can really be damaging and can destroy a lot of not only personal but also the neighboring properties for other people. So that was it for this session on introduction to occupational health and safety. If this is your area of interest, remember to give us a subscribe, that is click on the subscribe button and on the bell button which will help you to be notified when we post our next class and enjoy with us. See you till next time. Bye-bye.